Coach Hanji. I appreciate the Coach Hanji era, man. I, I've been under the Gary Taylor era as an, a media guy, and now it, it's different for me. Okay, and I always talk to that guy. Gary Taylor is a genius. He's a genius. I mean, if we did an IQ test on him, he's way above 140. Is there any question in your mind? Oh, there's no question in my mind whatsoever. So, he's, he figures everything out. He thinks about everything. Nothing is left uncovered, you know what I mean, so to speak. So you guys, you know, five, six years ago, there were people like, oh, man, he needs to get out of it. Right. And this guy, like, worked himself out of maybe it was a bad recruiting class. Maybe it was a little bit of funk. You guys won the EWL. Two years ago, right? Yep. Two years ago, and you won the duels. How many times have you won the duels in the last three years? The EWL duel. Uh, we never won you it. Never won the Edinburgh's, duel title. Ever, but you, but you won. Us. But you won the championship. The you EWL won the was two years ago. Yeah. I'll take the tournament title over the duel title any day. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm just saying, no I'm just going to put it out there. But you guys worked yourself out of this funk. You know, obviously BJ, he's a huge part of it. Wolf's a huge part of it. And then Walsh, he's Jets, trying to be yeah. he's trying to be the greatest the GOAT in your guys' in, program in, history. In he's history. He's going for, for his sure. third All American finish. Yep. I mean, he wants NC title. No, he's definitely on target for it right now too. And and I, I said to him the night ago, what's it like to be the guy that everybody just perpetually sweet sleeps on? <laughs> they are and they do, they you know. Do. And they, those guys are they're kitchen sink guys. The Walsh's. Oh yeah. All of them. But his basics have gotten tremendously better. That's the thing about tremendously him. Tremendously better. He's got really good basics. He really does. He and really that, does. Yeah, that's like the crazy thing about him. Like everybody thinks it's all kitchen sink, kitchen sink. And he sink. has the immeasur immeasurables that you can't calculate for. He's as competitive as they come, and he doesn't have the word stop or quit or anything in his vocabulary at all. He just keeps going. That's what he said, you know, like because Dad's a salvage yard junkyard guy. He's, He's a blue like, collar kid through and yes. through. And that's 100%. what he said. He said that you know the way my brother wrestled, the, the coaches my dad got me around. There's no quit in me. And no, then, there's not. Yeah. Never has been. His arm could be falling off. And it doesn't matter. And he's going to battle. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a model for the program, you know? It's a tremendous model for a program, and you can't you, – you can only hope a kid turns out to be that way, and you never knew Chad would turn out that way, but he's turned out better than we've ever imagined, and he takes this team as personal as the coaches take this team. So it's not just – him getting himself prepared mentally, physically, for his upcoming competitions and challenges. But he's at the beginning of practice, during practice, the end of practice, talking to his teammates, saying, think about this, do this right, do this better, we need to do this, let's get together on this. So he's doing his stuff, their stuff, and just leading by example, so in such a great way. So, you know, I talked to BJ, I talked to, obviously talked to, to Walsh. They're in this like, kind of like weird era, but they're also in this historic era of the, the Gary Taylor to the, the Hanji yep. handoff, right? Yep. And this was like set up. Like the, it was. You that's didn't have where to Coach do the Taylor's... national search. It was like set up. You were going to be the next head coach. Yes, that's where Coach Taylor's a genius. So you back to your uh, former comment where you said five years ago they were saying he needed to get out. Well, first of all, he's never going to just get out when it's not right, okay? So he put everything in place, bringing Nick in, you know, bringing Nace in and things like that to – put ourselves in position to become more successful so that he could lay the foundation for me to get the promotion without a national search. Now, it didn't hurt that I went to school there and I was, you know, well liked by the administration there, but it was all those things that Gary put in place. So that's the transition that BJ and Chad are making so easy for me because it's like, it's like every other year except Coach Taylor's not there. It's the program that they've molded as athletes and we've molded together with them as coaches, but They've made my transition seamless because of what, everything I ask them to do, they do without any question, and then they get their teammates to follow. So it makes it easier for me. BJ, you mentioned BJ, you know, he's made this, he's a big part of this, right? It's a big time. So BJ is an All-American as a freshman, and he's had some letdowns from there to here, right? Yes. So, you know, and I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, you know, and we had some nice wins at the NCAA tournament last year. Yes. We're hard on ourselves as wrestlers, right? But, you know, he's not back where he was. He's fifth as a freshman. Yeah, if you're not an All-American, you're a failure in our, in our sport. That's, that's how we act. And I, I really don't like that. It's tough. I have a problem with that. It's very tough. But it's, just, it's how it is. It's, it's just the, it's the going great, so to speak. It really is. So, BJ, I'm not a one-hit wonder. I'm going to come back. I'm, he is like the guy's peaks and valleys. You look at his match with Kemmerer, and you're like, this, that's the guy who was fifth as a freshman. Right. And then you watch him wrestle Pantelia. It's like, this and you're like that humans. is the guy that was this. Yes, this right. Question, yes. So you get what I'm saying. It's like yeah. there's inconsistencies there in him. If BJ manages himself, he will be a threat 
just like any other kid is at you know in the top eight in that country at that weight class at 57. He's got to manage himself. It's, and sometimes BJ lets other things in and tries to manage too many things. If he just simplifies it and manages himself, he will be on target when it comes to NCAAs. And he's a kid, and I say this to Nick and I say this to other guys, they, him and I, Nick and I, could have never done what BJ does. We can't wrestle like we did against Kemmer and still be a threat to be an All-American, uh, potentially at the end of the year, because BJ just has a switch that nobody has. We have to be doing everything right, consistent, you know what I mean, and, and build on our confidence. BJ can have a couple bad matches and just say, I'm done with losing and just figure it out. He's a freak in that way, you know what I mean? So, But there's still a lot that goes into it because he's got to manage himself at a pretty high level because there's some really good kids out there. Wolf kind of came along last year and a lot of people weren't seeing Wolf being an All-American, right? In 97? We saw it the whole way. I know so you good. saw it, yeah. but like, you know, us, the pundits outside right. looking in, we didn't see it. Who, who's the Wolf? Who's the, who's the third guy? Who's the fourth guy? Who's the fifth guy who can surprise me? Currently in the program right now? Currently in the program, who can be that guy, that sleeper to us, the media and us outsiders, that can be the guy that can be like, I didn't see that coming. Who's the guy for you? Who, who do you really look to? Right? I would you know, say you got guys. You I got do. Six guys in the top I do have six guys. You got six guys that are real, real good, and they're top thirty-three. I would say, from a national perspective, who's had success on a national level, be Anthony Cephalo, a thirty-three pounder. If he gets into it to another level, he can compete with those guys. He lost to the Missouri kid real close. He lost to uh, the North Dakota State kid real close. Who's pretty tough. Um, but he's a kid that can be in a match with anybody at any time. He lost to Pletcher 10-7, first tournament of the year. And it was close. It was like a takedown at the end that made it um, the 10-7. It was a takedown for Pletcher that gave him that three-point win. So he's there. He's knocking on that door. And Dippery, the X factor for Dippery is top. He can ride and turn anybody. And if he gets on top early enough and he scores points, he's going to make his way into that podium at the end of the year. You know, so those are probably my two next best chances. Um, and then there's kids that are starting to figure it out, you know, but they've got a long way to go. So, but those two are probably my closest as far as knocking on a door. Of uh, guys who could be the next wolf that punches through. Yes, yes. Nobody sees it and coming. Now, Dippery's is his last shot, so he's a dangerous kid. This is his last chance. He's a senior. Cephalo's still young. He's got some time, and he's significantly better than he was last year. But he needs, you know, he needs to take that one more step so that he can be that wolf and, and, and bust down that door. All right, Coach. NCAA is here in Cleveland. Is there anything, that when you look at it, it was in Philadelphia, you guys hosted it when Dustin won in 2011. Yep, yep. Um, does Cleveland matter to you? Is there anything special about Cleveland? Do you care that it's in Cleveland? Do you want it in Cleveland? Well, I love it that it's in the East because, you know, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Jersey guys, they're all crazy fanatical uh, wrestling fans. And it's not far for us, so our fans can go. We got seventy some people going to watch our kids wrestle. Really? Yeah, we got seventy tickets. You doing like NCAAs. shirts for sessions? And yeah, stuff? yeah, absolutely. We do I all that. that. So we've got a great following right now, and I think that's a significant reason why it's in, to have in Cleveland because our fans can get there. Sometimes when it's not, you know, St. Louis, it's easy to get, but they can't always get that far. Here they can drive out and they can get back if they have to for work or for personal reasons, things like that. So it's 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 nice to have it close proximity, and even Pittsburgh next year where we can get them even closer and have even more kids come. Edinburgh Sunday, how excited are you? I'm very much looking forward to that match. I don't know if we've ever beat them in a duel, ever in our history, in our program. And they're a good team, they always are, and they're always prepared. Um, this is a significant win for us. Uh, Chad Walsh has never beaten them in a duel. So he's taking it very personal, I'm taking it very personal. Uh, our preparation has been very good up through this whole year. So we're ready for the opportunity. Our kids just have to go and, and perform on Sunday. All right. You got anything else for me? I love talking to you, man. One of the nicest guys out there. I think I have the best coaching staff in the country. Really? Bold I really statement. Do. You want to know why? Why? Because nobody wears their passion on their sleeve like Nick Bedleon does. And he cares for my kids at a level like they're his own. Okay? He does more for those kids behind the scenes, outside of practice, than these guys will ever let on. Texting, talking, meeting, going to dinner, doing you know all these things, just kind of being that guy. And it creates such an elevated bond that we get the performances that we, we are looking for in a lot of times in, in tight matches. Dustin Kilgore is a great assistant coach. He's learning his way every day, and he's becoming a better coach by 
getting more in touch with the athletes because he's so dang good. And he's one of the strongest persons I've ever touched in my life. I put it in my con or his contract. I said, Dustin, if you touch me, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not allowed to grab me because he's too strong. But I, I, think, I just think that they've done a great job. And they share a mentality. You know them from Kent State very well. And they are very similar people, and their competitive spirit is off the charts. And they bring that spirit, attitude, mentality to our room every day, not just in practice, but even talking trash to the kids, getting them elevated to another level. So they make my job a lot easier. You know, Sometimes it's harder to manage those two when they're going at each other than it is to manage the kids on the team. But you know, other than that, I just think it's, you know, I'm very lucky to have the opportunity to be the head coach at Ryder, and, and I appreciate all the support they give us, uh, you know, year in and year out. So I, I think our kids do a great job, so I'm very happy to be where I'm at.